just go ahead and finish this contract and we'll move on to the next one. I am actually going to go ahead and accept that Field 68 contract just to get some money in the bank. And that should allow us to be able to rent a smaller harvester for sure. So borrow items. Just so that that contract doesn't disappear. It'll be okay if the stuff sets over at the shop for a little bit while we deliver this contract. Um, before we go much farther, I'm just going to go ahead through here and change some game settings. Um, just so you can guys see what I'm playing on. The time scale will change as we go along. If we need some time to speed up or whatever. Normally I will play on easy mode for economic difficulty. Traffic on. Um, this one, I think we will turn off seasonal growth. We'll still keep it one day months. No fixed visual months. We'll still have snow. Um, crop destruction, that will change depending on the series. Some I will keep it on, some I won't. Periodic plowing will stay on. Um, Fieldstone, more than likely it'll stay on. There is a mod that I use um, that does allow us to pick stone up faster at like 9 meters instead of the 5. So I probably will still go ahead and keep that on. I'll keep lime on. Weeds I typically keep off. They're just more of a nuisance. Um, it's just a whole other thing you got to do. And sometimes I feel like they're unrealistic. Sometimes they're... A little extreme. Dirt will keep on. Automatic in the start will keep on. Stop and go. We keep trailer fill. Um, this we may experiment with. Um, if we want to become more realistic. Fuel usage will go to high. It's super realistic. And we'll keep all these on off. And we'll see. So like I said, once we get this down here and we get all this delivered, we'll finish the contract and we'll look at what's selling wheat for the highest. But considering we won't actually have that much, I may just go ahead and sell all of it the feeding grain south. Probably just makes more sense to do that since time is money. So as we drive down through here, don't forget to go in, like the video, uh, leave me any comments for constructive criticism. I'm still really new at this. I'm sure it's super awkward. I, I'm not typically a come out of my shell type of person. This is definitely a jumping out of the shell head first. I'm not a public speaker by any means. I've talked in front of small groups uh, of people that I know very well. So this is a whole new thing. It's me trying to better myself, become becoming less, less hide back in the crowd, more you know, jump out there being a go-getter type person. This is just a, a stepping stone. I, I've played this game quite a bit. I've, I've, I know it quite well. There's still a lot of stuff for me to learn though, um, especially when it comes to the video recording, the angles, all of that. It's, it's quite interesting. I've watched videos, um, popular content creators, of course, Daggerwin, DJ Goham, all of them. And it's and a goal would obviously be 
to become a Giants partner at some point, maybe, if I can. If not, it's, it's still fun just to come out and make, make the videos, interact with everybody, and just try and better myself. If we're never, if we're not always bettering ourselves, then what are we doing? Just going through the motions. That's that's just not good for anybody. So, like I said, we did finish the contract, and then we ended up getting an extra thousand dollars on top. So, thousand dollars, a thousand dollars. Of course, we did have some higher burden fees in there. So, and we haven't even completed the contract yet. Which we'll go ahead and do now. It was a $1,500 contract, but we did lose some on it considering we rented the leasing costs, so $240. So we end up getting $1,422 from that contract. We'll go ahead and collect that. And then we'll get started on this contract for Field 68. This might take a while, so we'll just go ahead and get started on it, get things moving down there. So I would like to eventually get a wheel. Even the, uh, the heavy equipment side panel, it, it inter interests me a lot. I've never used it or even seen somebody use it. It's, uh, that would definitely be a learning curve for me for sure. see with this contract we do get the lights in. We get a pretty decent sized header. We get the quad track, the Birdman see or the uh, auger wagon, and we get a trailer. So clearly they want to need to do some carting with this setup. Which we will probably need to do. Probably do a little bit of a little bit of harvesting and then do some carting and some transport to feed inside. It's not that far to go from 68. So really not being good. So like I said about those snapping trailers. Guess we'll see if it right. Creek before what's what's your favorite thing to do on Elm Creek? Some people like row cropping. Um, that's probably my favorite thing. More of a row cropping operation. I I have dabbled in the animals. Um, 
not so much on 22 as I have on 19. Um, 19 had a pretty okay animal system. I played 19 more on console than I did on PC. So I didn't really get the full experience of the animal system. I, I've never really used Global Company at all. Um, it came with 19. I know there was a bunch of stuff that you could do with productions and animals. It's just... I know Global Company is quite, quite intense. Of course, being on console, it took us a long time to even get seasons, so... Luckily, having such a big header on this one, should go through this pretty quickly. It would be nice canola, so we won't get any straw from it. There are mods out there, I believe, you can... I know there definitely was on 19 where you can get straw from. Like soybean, canola, something like corn, maize, depending on what side of the pond you're on. I am based in the U.S., so a lot of my terminology will be more U.S. based. So if you guys are from Europe or even Asia or Australia I might not know a certain term that we might comment with, but I will definitely do my best to figure out. I'm not a person to shy away from a challenge. And it does definitely interest me. Different cultures, things like that. So we'll go ahead and time lapse. And See, see about halfway through and chime back. him emptied out here and we'll get the tractor out of the way and we'll go and get our transport vehicle to, to use the crane and beacons in this game and we turn on realistic beacons. They're so, so realistic looking. For those of you that don't know how, if you're on, I believe, Xbox, Xbox One, or the, uh, not Xbox One, Xbox Series, PS5, and PC, you can turn on realistic beacons. However, you cannot do it when you're in the game. You have to go out to the main menu and go to the settings from there. 
That is such a nice touch, though. So it looks like we got the Fent Mario. It looks like a 1000. I do like the Fent. They are making a they're making a surge, the Adco surge in the U.S. They're becoming more and more popular. So we, we've had Challenger for a little bit. The Challengers who bought Caterpillar from Ag. So we used to have the Caterpillar Ag tractors, which you don't really see obviously anymore since Challenger bought them. So Agco has tried to come into the U.S. and they're, they're making a pretty good surge. We're seeing more and more. And of course the ideal combo. I mean, you don't really see many of those at all. Up when you go into Canada, you'll see them up there every once in a while. The US, there's just not a whole lot of them. I think it's more the, the dealer support just isn't totally there yet. The more they can get dealer support. And of course, you're always going to have your diehard John Deere, your diehard Case. We'll get this over here to the, uh, the field and stage along the road again. graphics that they have on this game. You can see right in through there to the fan. It's incredible how far this game has come along in you know, five years even. I mean, you can even see the, the detail in the tire. I know it's not really a, a big item. Ooh, it's just a tire, but I mean, you can really and this is just a normal zoom. I'm not even zoomed in. Just walked in close. I mean, just look. Look at the light shield there. It's transparent. You can see the ripples in it. The lighting in this game is so much better, even from 19. It's insane. Down to the road surface, even. For those of you that are wondering, I am I am running an older GPU. Um, I'm running a, a 1078 gig. So, I mean, it's, that's pretty impressive that they're able to get that good of a render for an older GPU. I mean, they even have the camera on, or a sensor slash camera in front of that. That's insane. So like I said, I am I am running an older GPU. Um, it's the ASUS uh, ROG Strix, the uh, eight gigabyte 1070 GTX 1070. Uh, for this game, it's plenty. Um, even with doing some video recording, it's it's pretty pretty well. It, it gets up to about 85% usage at most. 
which is still high, but I'm also running the game on the highest settings that I can. Um, and it's, it's just incredible. Almost has me speechless how far games have gone. We'll head over there and we can see how full he is. There are a couple seconds too late. We'll get him emptied here and get him back on his way and we will probably call this call this kid for this episode. I really appreciate everyone watching. Like I said earlier, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Tell your friends, share it to your page, and I uh, hope everyone has a good morning, day, evening, middle of the night, whenever you're watching this.